Lord, help us all. Gwen, my <laughs> sister Gwen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I feel, I feel the full moon arising. You feel I that feel, energy coursing I through feel, your veins. I feel like I'm going to have to howl. <laughs> howl. 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 I feel like this is not the first podcast where we've done that before. We've definitely made <laughs> animal noises before in an intro. Hello. <laughs> What's happening, friends, fans, and fam? And welcome to another episode of the Shoujo Trash Showdown podcast. This is the show where we talk about your favorite stuff like shoujo anime, otome games, manga, trashy junk, uh, Leon Chiro. Uh, mm, I'm... <laughs> It, okay, so full disclosure, I'm wearing different headphones that are over my ears. I can't hear what the fuck I'm saying. I can hear Gwen. <laughs> That's all that matters, DJ. Exactly. I can't hear myself, but I can hear her. So it's, uh, I mean, I'd, I feel like I'd rather not hear myself than to hear myself echoing. Because like sometimes, because since I work at a call center, sometimes people like love having us like calling us and putting us on speakerphone and like the like terrible back feed and like I'll say something and then like three seconds later I can hear myself so then I'm like I stop talking I'm like oh wait that was me so then I like take off the headphones and just hold on to the mic and I just talk into it until I'm done talking <laughs> and I'm like well, I I'm one of those anything. I'm one of those jerks who when I was in a recording studio like singing you know how like most recording artists they keep the headphones on while they're singing so they can hear the track mm -hmm. yeah no i took those bitches off i like held it sort of close to my ear because like if i can't hear myself i am fucking lost right so uh yeah my name's Gigi. i can't hear myself welcome to anime palooza <laughs> hey, and i'm <laughs> my name's gwen and i i can very much hear myself yeah this is my co-host gwen and uh <laughs> we're here today to talk to you all about Howl's Moving Castle. Yay. I love this movie. <gasps> I uh, love this movie. I can't even tell you how many times I've watched this movie. I've watched it twice. <laughs> I, I well, I'll get to that in a second because <laughs> um, I have a I have a fun question that we can go through. Yes. Um, but yeah, today we're going to talk all about the Ghibli movie from two thousand. That's not the right page. Four. Anymore. 2004 oh, um and we're gonna ago. get into spoiler territory and all your questions your trash talk questions will be at the end of this podcast this is the first thing i've recorded since i've been back from like a month of vacation crazy that sounds um, nice i want to go on a month of vacation it wasn't really a month it was like two and a half weeks okay and, two and, and a half like, weeks it was like half of it was well in Texas and the other half of it was like at home. So it was like a staycation. Um, but I want to talk about the con that I went to also towards the end of this podcast. So we're going to get our topical stuff out of the way and then we're going to talk about stuff that's coming up, including Gwen's birthday and uh, maybe another Halloween special. Ooh. Ooh. But uh, first, let's talk about Howl's Moving Castle. Here's your spoiler warning. There's going to be spoilers. All right, I'm gonna read you a synopsis from Mal because I'm the one who has seen this the least amount of times. This will just mostly be Gwen talking about this. Totally fine and with that. Yeah, because she loves this movie. I also love this movie, but we're gonna get into that in a second. All right, let me read you the synopsis stolen lovingly from my anime list. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, let me get my narrator voice on. <laughs> That jumbled piece of architecture, that cacophony of hissing steam and creaking joints with smoke billowing from it as it moves on its own. That castle is the home to the magnificent wizard Howl. Arr! Oh, he doesn't howl. Infamous for both his magical prowess and for being a womanizer, or so the rumor goes in Sophie Hatter's small town. Sophie, as the plain daughter of a hat maker, haha, <laughs> Hatter, I get it, does not expect much from her future and is content with working hard in the shop. However, Sophie's simple life takes a turn for the exciting when she is ensnared in a disturbing situation and the mysterious wizard appears to rescue her. Unfortunately, this encounter, brief as it may be, spurs the vain and vengeful witch of the waste. Ooh. 
in a fit of jealousy caused by a past discord with Howell to put a curse on the maiden, turning her into an old woman. In an endeavor to return to normal, Sophie must accompany Howell and a myriad of eccentric companions, ranging from a powerful fire demon to a hopping scarecrow in his living castle on a dangerous adventure as a raging war tears their kingdom apart. <sighs> Wow, that was really dramatic. That was a uh, that's so, a lot better than what's on IMDb. Like I read the one on IMDb and I'm like, <laughs> dude, did they did anyone like watch? Okay, I guess they have a storyline down here, but there's like a little brief like three line thing that just says when an unconfident woman is cursed by an old lady by a spiteful witch or oh sorry is cursed with an old body. By spiteful wish, her only chance of breaking the spell lies with a self-indulgent yet insecure young wizard and his companions oh my God. in his legged walking <laughs> castle. This is the difference between a website that cares about anime and a website that doesn't give a shit. Right. Also, uh, the fact that it was nominated for an Oscar and the only reason why it lost, it was because it was up against a Pixar movie. And how many... Other animated movie movies have win. won against the Pixar movie. None. The Pixar so, movie didn't win. They never win. Wallace Nothing and wins Gromit against won. a Pixar. Like you might as well just write your but Pixar like not even go. Win. Like you're not gonna get that award. <laughs> but Pixar didn't win. No, they did. Oh, sorry, I'm not even paying attention. See, maybe. Well, I can't. I can't hear GGE to there. She can't hear herself. I can't hear her. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I thought so, they did. Uh, no, I have it right here. Oh, um, snap. So Howl's Moving Castle is a Ghibli movie. It was licensed by the Walt Disney Studios back in the day. Um, it, in 2006, it went up for an Oscar, but it lost to Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Were Rabbit. What the fuck? Right? Really? Oh, my God. Yeah, really. For real. Um, and Disney, as you guys know doesn't have the license to the Ghibli movies anymore. They have moved over to G Kids and me who just bought this movie last week thought I was buying the old Disney version and I didn't. I bought the new G Kids version instead. Yeah, I was like I thought okay, well, this is this is a Ghibli movie. I I I did actually rebuy the new one because it was on Blu-ray and I was like I really want to see this on Blu-ray cuz really the only old films you should buy into Blu-ray that wasn't originally made for Blu-ray is animated because that's really the only ones that you can see a difference. Um, but I was like, okay, well maybe it's going to have some really nice, like a, like a, I like menus. I like nice menus. Like, I don't know why, yeah. but I like nice menus and it was nothing. I, no. I still have my old copy. I'll have to look at it and compare it. But I was like, I I am completely underwhelmed. This is a Ghibli movie and it's Howl's Moving Castle. You would think they would have something. It it uh, it's not my favorite. And then like I went like I watched it in two parts, so I went to finish it today. And it was gonna take me back to the beginning. And it's like, you have previously watched this movie. Do you wanna resume where you left off? Fuck yeah, I wanna resume where I left off. <laughs> I didn't press stop for nothing, G Kids Blu-ray. Right. Um, but it does it does have some of the special features that were on the original Disney version. They didn't change the dub. The dub is still the Disney dub. And a Disney dub means that it was dubbed with uh, real actors, I guess, in quotation marks, instead of voice actors like you would know from a voice acting studio, like Bang Zoom in California, right. um, which is where a lot of the newer G Kids films are being dubbed and written so this was like had a whole Hollywood production around it. Please don't come at me because I said real actors. I didn't mean that. I meant like Hollywood actors, like right. ones that they're are in front of the camera. Right. They're considered. There's there's voice actors and then there's actors. So it's hard. It can get voice confusing. actors like, are actors too. <laughs> right. I mean they are actors, but they primarily do voice acting versus screen acting. I I I visual right. acting. I don't know how to, I don't know how to say like there is a difference between the two because the kind of work you do is completely different because you obviously have your entire body and face to show emotion when you like I feel like voice acting is 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 harder because you can only do it with your with your voice especially when you're dubbing something because it's already oh, been God. animated. So it's not something where it was like, take for instance, Disney's Aladdin. Literally the genie was was made for Robin Williams. They literally animated the genie around him. You're not going to get that 
with a with an anime because that's not it's not how this works <laughs> right like howl was not made around christian bale christian bale came in later right. and did the english voice of howl so um yeah howl's moving castle was also dubbed into french and then there's the original japanese dub of it um so let's talk about howl's moving castle which by the way is my second favorite ghibli movie now please keep in mind personally i am not the biggest ghibli fan and i have not seen all of the movies mm-hmm. um uh, in fact i just watched totoro for the first time on vacation and i slept through it so there went that <laughs> totoro i feel is especially like with i mean i i own it i've watched it several several times but at the same time i feel like my neighbor totoro when you re- start reading like people's theories about it it, it can kind of borderline almost turn into like a very depressing story depending on what theories you read and it's I'm like wow you literally just killed my entire childhood about this movie now I can never look at it the same I couldn't even tell you what the story was like I watched a little bit of it I fell asleep I woke up to Totoro's giant teeth and I grabbed my boyfriend and I said, what the hell? Went back to sleep, woke up at the end, saw the cat bus, said, what the hell? Went back to sleep, woke up for the credits. That was my experience of watching my neighbor Totoro for the first time. It was also 8.30 p.m. So it wasn't like I was tired or drunk. So anyway, uh, that funny. was my experience the first time I watched My Neighbor Totoro. But let's talk about our first times watching Howl's Moving Castle. So before we get to Gwen, who's seen it 20 times, <laughs> my Gigi. first time wa- watching Howl's Moving Castle was literally like two years ago. Um, and it's where I met Shanna in person for the first time. She was like, let's go see Howl's Moving Castle. And I was like, OK, why not? So um, we were in the theater and we watched it dubbed and it was like one of the most beautiful things I'd ever witnessed anime wise. Like I just fell in love with it from the beginning and fell in love with Howl. Oh, so wonderful. So wonderful Howl is. Um, And it became my second favorite Ghibli movie just like that. So Mm -hmm. but I know a lot of people have a lot of nostalgia for this movie. And I bet Gwen has a lot of nostalgia for this movie. Yeah, I yeah, I I I really do like this movie. It's I would say my two favorite Ghibli movies would be this one as well as Kiki's Delivery Service. I think Kiki's Delivery Service will always be the first for me. So let's show my age here for a hot minute. I used to rent Kiki's delivery service all the time from Blockbuster on VHS. Like I, it all the time. I, it was that and the last unicorn. I rented those movies so many times. It was insane. I don't know why I just oh, didn't man. ask to, for it to be purchased. Cause I, <laughs> I, I, I just, I loved it so much. And then after that, I watched princess Mononoke, which I wasn't really a big fan of probably because I was like, I don't know, like 10 years old. And that's, I mean, that's kind of, that's not really something that's geared towards a 10 year old. So that's probably why. And I haven't really watched it since then. Um, and I didn't really care for spirit away once again, because I was really young and it didn't really, I could relate to Kiki's delivery service because it was a cute kind of coming of age story versus those other ones not not so much not for a 10 year old me and then how i mean mm, mm, that howl though (laughs) that awakening inside me going oh yes hello how how are you you? how come there's no boys like you at school is what i want to know if you're wondering why a Ghibli movie is on the Shoujo Trash Showdown when it's not at all trashy, I would like to introduce you to a character named Howl. <laughs> right? Like, he is, like, the embodiment of kind of, like, a very Shoujo trope because he's so dreamy and so, like, and especially his, like, over the top when, like, his hair accidentally gets dyed, like, this, like, this ginger red color and he's just, like crying he starts turning to goo and then he's like his goo is leaking over to calcifer and he's like he's going to extinguish me i'm going to die sophie help me and then she ends up finally sophie and the the boy the apprentice oh his name escapes me 
I Markle? literally just Michael Markle Sparkle Markle Markle <laughs> See I can't hear So <laughs> they finally are able to like get him off his like little like stump stool and like carry him up the stairs and I think the best moment of that is Sophie notices that his towel fell off and she kind of like averts her eyes but like in the corner of her eye is totally checking him out <laughs> I was like, you go, Sophie, you go. I wonder for how many people was Howl's Moving Castle like their sexual awakening? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's, I mean, it came out in 2004. So, God. I was in... I graduated high school in 07. I was a, I was a freshman in high school when that came out. Yep, just right about Holy that time. crap. That's so long. <laughs> this is almost a 20 year old movie. Holy guacamole. Yep. In four, five years, this will be a 20 year old movie. Holy so, crap. So it's a 15 year old movie now. That's crazy. It can almost drive. It can almost drive. <laughs> Pretty soon but you'll be know able what? to vote. It doesn't look 15 years old, no. though. Like, when I saw it, I was like, wow, this CGI is CGI, but it's, like, really well done. Yeah, it's not like that where it takes you completely out, like, with a lot of anime that nowadays where they show Ugh. this really pretty animation, and all of a sudden it goes to CG, and you're like, ugh. And it's, like, it's so hard. And, like, unless it's, like, a huge, big budget, like you know, Pixar movie or Disney movie where they have the CG and they're spending a buttload of money on it and they have hundreds of people working on one movie. It's like you can tell it's night and day. It's like they don't give the animators the time to actually come out with quality content. I mean, Idol Anime is the number one culprit for that. Yep. <laughs> and it blows. <laughs> I mean, I just... I just thought it was so well integrated into the movie. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I can tell this is CGI, but it looks really good. And then you're like, holy crap, this is made in 2004. And you go back and you watch something like Toy Story 1, and it looks like garbage compared yeah. to what Toy Story 4 looks like now. But I guarantee you, they wouldn't have to remake Howl's Moving Castle to make the CGI look any better because it looks fantastic. Right. I mean, if anything, if they, like, say it is, you know, 20 years from now, they want to, like, enhance it or upgrade it, they probably just have to run it through a program, you know, like, the video file, run it through a program to just brighten it up, sharpen some things. But, I mean, in actuality, it, 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 a lot, it looks a lot better than 90% of the anime that we're getting nowadays. There's no I kind of strange shots. I mean, I get it now, it, especially if you're watching seasonal anime. It's on a budget. It's on a very tight time restraint. But it just it just sucks that it's like they're more of a quantity than quality nowadays. And this is definitely like high quality. And that's I like that. It's right. more enjoyable. Like it's, it's very nice to look at. Um, mm -hmm. I think the character designs, while they are like Ghibli designs, so they're not like your normal kira kira sparkle eye bishi boys i think the character designs are lovely yes. um, even sophie when she's old and the mm -hmm. witch when she's old like some yeah, of that very well is, done is like disturbing and i was like oh okay like this is what it is now they have the fire animated really well turn up head the scarecrow mm -hmm. uh, the little boy and then you know sophie is basically looks like nausicaa from valley yeah. of the wind but with silver hair and then howl howl how the best ghibli man y'all can fight me <laughs> he is he's i would say one of the because he's such a versatile character and so different that it's he's even though his character develops i feel like kind of behind the scenes it's not something where you don't notice that it's happening. If that makes right. sense. No, it definitely does. Because Howell at the beginning of the movie, when he like swoops down, grabs Sophie and they start walking in the sky. And I was like, oh, this is my dream come true. I did not know this dream was a dream that I had. But now it's here and I love it. 
um compared to howl at the very end of the movie where he is like this big fat over feathered crow right and is like you know sophie needs to kiss him sophie needs to take care of him he needs to get his heart back like it's just it's such a change and there's a change in sophie too because she starts off the movie thinking that she's very common very plain that you know nobody really cares and you know then she turns into an old woman and she thinks nobody really cares but as the movie progresses and as the story progresses howell obviously cares doesn't care what she looks like can even tell you know she's not what she seems to be so right so i remember when i i think i did a rewatch i don't remember who said this on twitter i had said something about i had rewatched it and i loved it blah 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 and someone had commented it and said you know ghibli movies i find very confusing i said why do you find them confusing he goes i feel like there's a lot of plot holes and i was like okay give me an example and at that time i hadn't really thought about it because i probably was just watching it for how and i really wasn't had (laughs) you know what i mean like i really hadn't thought about it like actually like when i watched it this time around i had really thought about certain things because i had remembered that tweet and them saying that and they said i don't understand why the witch cursed sophie i don't understand it well that that's very easily to to explain the witch had seen her with sophie the witch is completely jealous because she wants howl to herself so she cursed her into something that she felt howl could never love and right Everyone had had all these rumors about how how uh, you know goes after young pretty women and then eats their hearts. Well, guess who probably started that rumor? The that witch, because she wanted how for him for herself. And if you think about that, that leads him to have a very lonely life because he can't trust anyone. All these rumors are going around. He can't trust if someone is testing to see if they would eat their heart or maybe they're like oh well i want him to eat my heart because i love him so much you know like the crazy kind of you know they would want him to do that because they're so in love with them it's kind of like that turns into a his character being kind of a very dark and depressing character because that's that's kind of sad if you think about it i mean all he has to talk to is a little boy and a piece of fire right (laughs) who a piece of fire that has a whole bunch of sass (laughs) And a little boy who probably is sassing the fire. So. And he has to move around all the time, which is why his castle moves. Right. He has to move around. That's why he has that turn dial. And he has accustomed to all these personas because he doesn't he wants to be part of these these towns because he almost has to to be able to make a living because he can't make a living under his own name he has to come these aliases and these variety of towns to be able to make potions and all these things for other people because he can't do it as himself and even the boy has to disguise himself probably because he doesn't want to anyone to know or try to find any sort of a link between him and how because that would be disastrous depressing. yeah <laughs> like the more like when i thought about i was like man this is actually very depressing and if you think about it Sophie being Sophie and Howell being in his situation that he's in, they're almost like the perfect match because he doesn't want anyone that's crazy or over the top or flamboyant. Like her, Sophie's mom is just like, I, I wrote a note and I said, Sophie and Howell are living in a world full of extravagant people when they're not extravagant. Like, well, okay, Howell's, Howell's bedroom is a little extravagant, but I mean... <laughs> I feel like he almost I feel like he's almost collected those things as like to calm himself like you know he has the things ticking and the wind chimes and it's like he wanted to fill his room with things that calmed him or made him feel happy because everything else in the world just blows for him you know what I mean like and he has these you know leaders and kings and queens trying to recruit all the witches and wizards and then turning them into these like ugly crow like monsters to to kill one another like that's terrible that blows like, that's, god that's <laughs> even more depressing than what i had read this movie was about which i heard it was about like desert storm 
like and how pointless of a war it was it really was it's literally it feels like a war of them just trying to say how much power they have who has the best bigger power and it's it's like a pissing contest. Yeah, and they're blaming each other for the fact that this missing prince is just, they don't know where this prince is at. And it's like they're almost blaming each other for the fact that they can't find this, ma- this like, mysterious missing prince and they don't know where he is and they're blaming each other for it and they're just blowing each other up in the meantime. Man. I mean, I can see where people would say that the Ghibli movies have plot holes, but they all seem to be... Um, based around some kind of overarching theme like this one the theme was like desert storm i believe i well, may have the war wrong off, they're all based off books too these are, are all is pre-existing this based off books. a book yeah they're all the howl's moving castle is like five books long it's like wow yeah it's not just like a novel as i looked it up and it's an older it's an older book because it says writing is made by Diana Wayne Jones may wrote this book. I believe that's what IMDb is telling me. She is a writer. She's known for Howl's Moving Castle and yep. Anchor's Gone Goon. Yeah, but like, I see it. yeah, and like every single. I mean, I don't know about my neighbor Totoro, but like, um, Arietti is based off a book called The Borrowers. I read that when I was in elementary school. And I didn't know these were based off a book. Yeah. Majority of them, I feel like they are based off of an existing almost, well, even um, Kiki's Delivery Service is based off a book. But I think that one is made by a Japanese author, and it's super hard to find the actual book. I've tried multiple times to, like, find it and read it. And when I did find the English version of it, it was like four hundred dollars. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna pass. <laughs> okay, so thing. I lied. It's not about it's not about Desert Storm. It's about when the United States invaded Iraq in two thousand three. Hmm. Sorry, I have no my knowledge of history and wars is garbage, um, but I'm just reading this off Wikipedia right now. Um, It says Miyazaki stated that he had a great deal of rage about the Iraq war, which led him to make a film which he felt would be poorly received in the U.S. Whoops. Um, It also explores the theme of old age, depicting age positively as something which grants the protagonist freedom. It contains feminist elements and carries messages about the value of compassion and then it's the movie is thematically significantly significantly different from the book. While the book focuses on challenging class and gender norms, the film focuses on love and personal loyalty and the destructive effects of war. Okay. So that makes sense. Mhm. So like if it's based on the United States invasion of Iraq, basically the whole thing was how stupid it was for this war to be going on in the movie like literally a war for no good reason Mm -hmm. so and even at the end like I felt the end kind of ended very abruptly when like yeah the turnip boy turns back into the prince and like the witch is like oh you should go and tell your dad you're okay and stop this dumb war and he's like yeah i should go do that yeah and it then- ma- it makes no <laughs> sense and i think that was the point like if because it's based on right this because invasion, this war is completely pointless so the fact that you're ending this war just haphazardly and out of like no self um you know what i mean yeah mm-hmm Wow, we getting real deep for some trash, y'all. Right? Dude. Yeah. Welcome but- to our TED Talk. <laughs> I understand, too, the, po- the part about how aging is a positive thing, mm-hmm. especially in culture like today, yeah. where cancel culture is such Ugh. a huge thing, and antis, and oh my gosh, like... Antis it's like- and people who stand this and go after people who don't stand what they if you ship it's, if it's, you don't it's a ship. very competitive world that we're in and it kind of sucks because it, it it was almost like when i remember when i was really getting into anime when i was a kid it was kind of like yeah people thought you were weird if they weren't into it but like when you found like your people 
It like they didn't care that you weren't into the same stuff that they were. They just cared that you actually are you know the stuff that they're watching. You know what I mean? Exactly. And now it's like if you don't agree with me, you should go jump off a bridge. And yeah. I'm not I'm not down with that, you guys. Mm-mm. Like that is I read a post mm. Uh, someone's tweet who I'm not going to talk about it because it's a very big mess but they were pretty much and it had something to do with then the anime community and stuff like that and they literally were blaming people for certain things and saying that like they literally were threatening to go find them and kill them and I was like what the hell is wrong with you are you freaking kidding me this is freaking (laughs) Guys, these what? are not <laughs> these are not like the older anime fans. Like these are newer saying, fans. Cause like I'm older saying, anime fans yeah. like me and Gigi, this is why we made this podcast, because we don't care like we want to share the interest that we're in and the in a very, very niche market that we are into of the shoujo genre because it's so not received as something as like a legitimate genre so to say like if people said oh you're into shoujo like that's not that's not real anime well yeah it is like if your love life can be a real anime my would pre can be a real <laughs> anime too like leave me alone well every everything aside all the the cancel culture and the antis and the shipping and the non-shipping aside like when you do grow older you kind of tend to not care about all these things that are so important to you right at this second Mm -hmm. and you know it's like that's kind of what Sophie's going through in this movie like she was a teenager working in a hat shop do to do going through my life don't really have you know any cares except for the fact that my mom goes away all the time and my sister's super pretty and you know I have all of this pressure on me or whatever And she ages and then all of a sudden she's like, wow, I'm an adult. I could be and should be doing adult things. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go clean this random dude's house because (laughs) I want to, you know, and it's it's just like she finds so much freedom in her new lifestyle and, mm-hmm. you know, we're not saying that we're grandma's fam because we're definitely not. Right. Um, but all these things that that are blowing up people's minds right now. And I get it. Like, I get that when you're in high school or when you're like just coming into your own and you're you're realizing all these new things and all this stuff is going on even when you're in college and you like go to a bar for the first time or like you smoke your first cigarette or you do all this stuff that's like brand new and whatever you're so influenced (laughs) by other people that there's so many pressures on you that I don't I mean you don't know what to think and you don't know where your heart's going or where your head is at you know you don't it's so hard to pinpoint what you think should be going on but then when you get older you're like man shit like I can do whatever I want now like Mm -hmm. who's gonna stop me you know and if something that somebody said you know back when I was a teenager like you shouldn't like uh let me throw out something you shouldn't like tigers because tigers are mean and they have claws and they'll bite you so you can decide you know when you're older man what are these people talking about tigers are great they got stripes you know they're awesome they growl you know it's great Uh, you know why didn't I love tigers oh because you know I got these ideas in my head when I was younger but now Mm -hmm. that I'm older I have this sense of freedom and I can think how I want and I can be who I want. That's kind of what happens. And like you can sort of like take it like that. Like they were saying like gender norms and whatever. Like <sighs> Yeah, I, I looked I wasn't at the date talk. of the book. The book was made like a while ago. So the fact that she was wanting to write something like that is very impressive. So I mean in like, my eyes good on you. Like good on all you people who are just throwing away what 
you know, other people think that you should do and what you should say and who are becoming your own. Like everybody who's transgender, who knows who they were inside and it doesn't match their physical body. And now you're going to be who you want to be and live your best life. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Love who you want to love. Do what you want to do. I, I got on a real big tangent there. This is why I don't read Wikipedia. Yeah, same. I mean, we both kind of went on a tangent just now. <laughs> like, and also it's like, you know, you don't like things like, because other people weren't. Like, I remember in, like, elementary school, like, I just never told people that I was into Sailor Moon and stuff because it was like, oh, you're into Sailor Like, people were like, why would people say that back then? And it's like, you don't understand. Like, when we were kids watching anime was like they thought you were weird you know yeah, no, no but if you found somebody who liked it like you were real lucky right and like my best friend ashley who i've known since fourth grade like i would you know ride my scooter over to her house that little push scooter or my bike and i would like stay the night at her house and like we'd listen to really stupid um covers and songs and like silly music from sailor moon or like the lunar rock cd or we would watch the vhs tapes that we had or the tapes we had recorded from like toonami when they aired it on tv and it was like i could like like sailor moon around her but around anyone else i couldn't and it, that kind of sucks. Like, I kind of, like, <laughs> almost envy kids nowadays because it's kind of crazy. Like, I watched this video of an artist that I recently found. And he's watercolor. Like, he's doing his watercolors of, like, this beautiful portrait of this lady and flowers. And it's just so beautiful. And he goes, this is not considered art when you're in art school. I was like, this is this is beautiful. This is art. And it was like, he, his explanation of it was when he, because he's in art school right now in Germany, and they are a much older generation, and they have a very, he was saying they have a very narrow-minded idea of what art is. And you can't just, like, have fan art, because he went to, like, this, um, I don't know, some sort of event where he was so supposed to bring some pieces and stuff, but then he didn't know until he was there that they also wanted to see, like, old art, like, from years ago. They wanted to, like, you know, 10 years worth of art to see, and he's like, well, I have it on my iPad, and he's, like, feels embarrassed because, like, all of his art on his iPad is, like, fan art and original characters and, like, an anime style, and, like, they just kind of looked at him, they're like you're never going to get far with this. And I was like, they have, like, no clue. <sighs> like, that's so... And I felt, like, almost of, like, when I did art, like, I had a few teachers that were just really shitty when it came to my art. And then I finally had this teacher that would just, like, encourage me to do all the weird shit I wanted to do with my art. Like, I was a very 3D type of person. So, like, I... You, you know, one of my inspirations for most of my art is an artist called Robert Rauschenberg, and he makes some pretty weird shit. I mean, my favorite piece was actually in Sweden when I lived there, and I, like, freaked out. I was like, Patrick, look at that advertisement. I want to go to that museum. He's like, why? I'm like, because I want to see that. <laughs> he goes, that's literally a goat with a tire wrapped around its belly standing on a canvas. And I was like, yes, that is what I want to go see. And he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> And, like, I, like, you know, it wasn't like it was morbid or anything. And it was, I don't know, she always encouraged me to do the weird stuff. Like, you do you. And then I had this, um, I had two pottery teachers that one of them encouraged all my weird, like, abstract pottery. And the other one was like, I don't understand what this is because to him pottery was supposed to be functional. And my stuff was not very functional. So he couldn't understand why I would want to make it. <laughs> and so we had a very disagreement <gasps> on that. <laughs> Um, but I mean, he never said I shouldn't do it. He just said, well, figure, figure it out and find, find a path. And I was like, okay, I'll figure it out sooner or later. Well, I'll just in the meantime, make all this weird shit. <laughs> and See, then like, oh. <laughs> and like, and then I got away from art and then I felt like I didn't deserve to be able to do art and stuff. And then I recently got into it, but it was like one person completely can like 
get at you and just like destroy something that you're into and it really sucks it's, and it's kind of like this anime kind of just picks that where it's like these t- these two neighboring countries are literally destroying each other for no reason they're literally destroying all these lives they're manipulating these witches and wizards to become their like peons to destroy each other and they're just getting a kick out of it it's like one likes the tiger goat one doesn't like the tiger one goat. likes tigers one likes goats <laughs> Yeah, like who's <laughs> gonna be the victor here? And you know we're gonna fight. See, that's so stupid. Yeah, and so it's kind of crazy that this. I did not expect this podcast to like go in this no, direction at all. And I was just like, it, it, the more you talk about it, especially when I was seeing all that like kind of depression that how. I mean, how else is he gonna act? Of course, he's gonna put on this persona when people see his castle and they're like oh it's Howell he's gonna come to town you know and steal everyone's hearts and blah 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 and it's like like that's very like the witch of the waste really destroyed his life quite literally destroyed his life until Sophie came around and you know people are doing this in real life people are destroying people's lives for dumb reasons yep and it it's awful. Like, I mean, look at all those YouTube channels that literally make a lot of money over making tea videos. Like, who's got the tea on this? And who's got the drama on this? And who's got... It's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> like, sometimes it's entertaining because I'm just, like, watching these things and these people act like... They're, like, on a YouTube live or something like that or, like, an Instagram live. And they're like, blah, 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 stole my idea. Nah, 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 nah. And I'm like, wow. Oh, and you're older than me? Dang. <laughs> like, oh, girl. <laughs> Someone needs to step back and think about their life for a moment. Like, that's insane. Like, Holy uh, crap. Like, this is like the world is full of all of these battles that mm-hmm. don't need to exist in the first place. Right. And sometimes I think that people just need to stop. And take a breath and see what's right in what's right in front of you and just be like, here, here I am. Here's my friend. Here's my boyfriend. Here's my girlfriend, my husband, my wife, my mom, my dad, my grandma, my kid, my brother, my sister, my dog, my body pillow. (laughs) Body pillow. And this is what I have. Mm -hmm. Personally, I'm happy with what I have. If I'm not happy with what I have, I can change it. Yep. And this is how the story is going to end. Whether it be you deciding that a war is not worth it and giving up on something that you had chased for a very long time. Or whether you are riding on a floating castle through the clouds, kissing a boy with black hair who used to have crow wings. Like... There's so much that is going on inside yourself and inside the people around you that sometimes you have to let all the bullshit go yeah, and just be like, this is my life. I'm going to live it, yeah. you know, and whether you like anime, you don't like it. I mean, whatever, whatever it is that it's currently plaguing you this is my life you know I'm I'm gonna live it you know you don't have to spend an hour and a half twice a month listening to us talk totally you're right to do that you know Mm -hmm. and if you do we're here for you to entertain you and bring you existential bullshit like this (laughs) right we're gonna make you uh, think about it on a podcast about Howl's Moving Castle which you know but it's your choice and just you know if it's not for you let it go and just notice what's around you and I know we really haven't talked about this anime at all and we're like about an hour in but I really don't have anything else to say about this anime other than I really enjoyed it um Mm -hmm. and we have lots of questions but so I will let you yeah what was your favorite part in the movie like what 
like obviously you like the you know obviously you were charmed by how and all the animation and how well it's done but like what part in the movie just made you go wow like I, that was like not just because it made you laugh or something but just to be like that moment where it kind of hits you where you're like this is a really good movie I think it was when Sophie found Howell, like, in, was he in a cave or something? Oh, yeah. T- it was kind of, like, end. in his castle. It was, like, in his room was, like, the entry, but, it, like, his room was turned into, like, that, like, never-ending yeah. cave thing. Because it would have, like, his things popping out randomly in the cave that were in his room, like a teddy bear here or, like, this weird lamp here kind of a yeah, thing. I think, yeah, I think that was it. Like, when she finds him there and he's all, like, this big mess of feathers and he's all beat up and, like, she literally has to, like, kiss him to get him to, like, get out of there. When and he's I kind was... of, like, his crow and kind of almost beast-like kind of yeah he's okay yeah and it was like beauty and the beast in reverse Mm -hmm. actually not in reverse it's exactly like beauty and the beast never mind um yeah that 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 was the part and i was like in the theater sobbing yeah yeah what was your favorite part i mean there are i mean plenty of parts that i really really liked but i think a part that I really liked is uh, the part where the camp towards the end, the castle is completely like demolished. There's like nothing left of it um, except for like a plank of wood and like two legs. Like, that's all <laughs> that's left. And um, she's in a part with Heen and she finds Howl and Howl just has like this blank look on his face. Like he's, it almost gives you that perspective where, cause there's that part it, where Calcifer says, if you keep going into that form, you're never going to be able to change back. So it's kind right. of like his his anger and everything in that form have like completely overtaken him. And he's just now emotionless or like has no like he's just completely gone. But it's like he still knows Sophie's voice. So when Sophie says, take me, he's I think she says, take me to Calcifer, doesn't she? I think. She asks to be taken somewhere and he just like takes her there. Like it's 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 like he's not there, but it's like her voice is so strong with him and their bond is so strong that it's like even though he's in that, you know, oblivion of his mind, he's still able to like do anything for Sophie. Right. Oh, this movie's so good. <laughs> it's so good. That's why I've watched it so much. That's why I have two copies. <laughs> Like, 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 guys, I'll be real with you. Like, I was trying to watch it yesterday so we could do this recording and I wasn't really paying attention to it. So I like kind of blanched over like an hour and a half. And then just right before we started recording, I finished the last half hour and I was like, oh, yeah, I really do like this movie. Like, Mm Sometimes when I have to watch something before we record, I'm like, oh, this is work. Like, I'm going to procrastinate and put it off for as long as possible. And unfortunately, like, this was the case for this. Mm -hmm. And I had so much to do yesterday. And I have so much to do, like, after we're done. It's it's literally like it was your vacation. And now you're trying to catch up from being away for, like, two and a half weeks. And it's like, okay, now I've got all this stuff that I got from my convention. And now I'm trying to unpack. Now I've got to clean. Now I've got to figure this out. Now my so-and-so is calling me. Is they, they don't know where their iPad is. They don't know where, <laughs> they don't know where their house key's at. I can't tell them. I, I, I don't know. It's It sometimes is hard to get back into a normal swing of things when you've been away for so long. Because it's like you just don't want to because you're having such a good time away from it you know what I mean (laughs) like and it's it's super hard for me because like before I left I was like fuck I'm only watching anime for work and then Mm -hmm. like while I was gone we watched a little bit of it like we went to the movies and we saw Millennium Actress and then Chris I was with Chris my boyfriend for the two and a half weeks that I was on vacation um and like we caught up with like Dr. Stone and we did all this other stuff. And I was like, oh, I'm kind of enjoying this again. And then I was like, I should watch something for fun. And then I was like, 
oh wait I have all this work to do but anyway so the point of this story was was that it started off for work and then today when I got off my real job I came home and tried to finish watching it before we were recording and I was like oh yeah this is why I like anime again Mm -hmm. so it kind of like it's good when a piece of media can flip that switch in you and just be like oh yeah this is why I like to do what I do Mm -hmm. you know and then to think that oh my god there's all these levels to it and it's getting like deeper and more intense and all this other stuff it's like you know this could be a children's cartoon to some kids but like we're sitting here as grown-ass adults talking about gender roles and ageism and the pointlessness of war you know like Mm -hmm. it just I don't know that that in and of itself like is just a little existential moment for me yeah I bet we lost half our listeners somewhere in the middle because we're not talking about trash sorry fam not talking about howl's butt I mean we could we could. I'm sure there's a question that we have about Howell's butt somewhere. Oh, um, I can probably find it. No, I'm <laughs> Wait, but, that but, was one I asked. No, I'm just <laughs> I asked that question. Oh, God. Before we get to your trash talk questions, fam, um, I wanted to talk about this topic. And then I was going to talk about this in the beginning, but um, I figured I'd save it a little bit for the end. So I went to my only convention this year. And that was Anime Fest in Texas. Um, Used to be my favorite convention. Not so much anymore. Like, and it's not because of any, like, bad experience that happened there. I had nothing but positive experiences. And all the people who work there were really great. They always are. You Like, no bad experiences with anybody. Um, It's just the way that they formatted it this year was really weird. Like, they added a gaming convention a couple weeks after Gen Con, which, if you guys don't know, is, like, the biggest tabletop convention in the United States, maybe in the world. Um, So they had it split off, like, between gaming and anime. I didn't even go up to the gaming section, but from what I heard from other people, it was pretty lame. Um, And they didn't have any American voice actor guests. (laughs) Like, yeah, that's really strange is usually bigger conventions have like a good mix of like um, creators and American side of things, producers, writers, voice actors, um, Japanese guests and creators and voice actors and sometimes seiyus. And, you know, I think uh, what was it last year? One of the Texas cons had like the uh, Sailor Moon musical cast there. Didn't they do like the the play? Oh, I think it was at um, Sakura Con. Okay, so I mean, like, you know, there's things to do. People get hyped about, and I I remember I w- was looking at like the the roster of people, and it like it literally felt like you know, no shade to any guests that they had, but it didn't feel that they had a diverse group of um, guests at all like usually when you go to a convention you have a little bit of everything because there you know anime is not just one thing it's a multitude of variety of things and it literally felt like they had like oh here's this creator who made this really popular anime who's really popular right now and then oh and here's the uh the um um director of art for the anime that's also from that other guy made and and here's the (laughs) cast um manager for that same anime that the other two are and oh and here's this this guy who kind of did like some sort of key art who made it for the same anime that all the other guests are part of so if you liked mirai you were gonna have a really good time at a fest because like the entire japanese crew from mirai was there and i'm not saying anything bad because i did meet all of the guests who were there except for a couple cosplayers mm-hmm. um who i had no idea who they were um <laughs> you're like but i don't know yourself else. i did meet all the japanese guests they were all very very nice and seemed like they were having a nice time some of them even drew like little characters on my stuff that i got signed um 
very nice. There were not long lines to meet anyone. Like the other two anime fests I've been to, the lines were crazy outrageous. Everybody was rushed and, you know, they gave out tickets beforehand to make sure that, you know, they'd have enough time and have enough people in whatever. Um, Leon Chiro was like a half an hour late <laughs> to his signing. Yes. Um, there was maybe 20 people in there when I went and he like came up to everybody before he even did it, said hello, shook hands, gave hugs. And then like when we went through his table, took his time with everyone, he brought his own selfie lighting. <laughs> He's a good pro, cosplayer. Pro. That's all I say. Pro. He is a pro. Very nice. Such a lovely person. Um, And then all the English voice actors who were there for the gaming convention. Oh yeah. That's weird were all very nice nothing was rushed so i liked that aspect about it but it didn't seem like there was enough programming to like keep people very entertained the few panels that i went to were packed because there was nothing else to do right and not gonna lie like half the day on sunday we were upstairs in the hotel shooting stuff for dub talk like shooting videos um and like we were watching Charge Man Ken in somebody's hotel room because we didn't really have anything to do. Like me and Chris escaped for an hour and went to fucking Whataburger. Like <laughs> that was our Sunday con day. Right. Um, but it was just it was weird. Yeah. It was very laid back. Like very different from what your past experiences were at yeah. that convention. Like it didn't seem to be a lot of excitement going around. And then the last panel, which had all the English voice actors at it, was a D and D game that lasted six hours because they were like an hour and a half late setting it up. The reason that they were late was because they were gonna Twitch stream it and they had to mm. do lighting and do sound testing and do all this other stuff. They had a lot that went into it, so I can understand why they were late. But I was just like, I thought I signed up for a three hour panel and now it's turning into six. Oh, my God. Um, but it was still really interesting. It was probably one of the more interesting things I'd seen all weekend because like they had like repeat things that we went to. Like we went to see the Udapri class players again. Um, I don't really want to talk about it. <laughs> I will say the outfits they had were better last year. Oh. I know. I was sad. And the Camu girl wasn't there. Oh, it was your favorite girl too, wasn't it? Yeah, she was my favorite and she wasn't there. And I was so sad. I was like, I came for you. But she wasn't there. Aww. Um, And it, it was just, it was just different, you know? And it wasn't as like, I will tell you the most loud and rowdy panel that we went to was when we went to Disney karaoke at like one in the morning. That's kind of strange that that is the rowdiest <laughs> panel when it's Disney karaoke at 2 a.m. Like, I mean, there were like 50 people in this room up and basically doing a fucking conga line to from zero to hero from Hercules. And I was like, these are my people <laughs> like this is the shit. But it's kind of strange that like all the stuff that you really enjoyed had nothing to do with anime. It was yeah. D&D and D Disney songs. It was very weird. Um, So that was anime fest. Uh. I don't know if we'll be returning next year, uh, but I can tell you where Gwen and I will be going. Hey, confirm. Gigi, do you want to confirm? We're confirmed. We're going to be at Anime Central in May of 2020. Ah! Ow, ow. I'm so excited. Like, legit. I've been wanting to go to this convention ever since I was in middle school. Like, kid, do not. Half of my life have been wanting to go. And I'm like, bucket list check mark going. Like, <laughs> super stoked. Like, we've been trying to plan this. And I was like, okay, well, this is going to depend on whether or not we can get a hotel room. Because the hotel rooms for Anime Central go, like, super fast. And if we can't get one, like, I live about literally an hour away but like to commute back and forth an hour away like it's a lot it's a lot and like you want to have like a home base there especially because anime central is supposed to be huge i've never been there personally i've always had some other thing that i had to do that weekend so i could never go and i was like you know what i'm going to commit to it this year if we get a hotel room we're totally going to do this and we got a hotel room so we're doing this <laughs> 
I'm so excited. Oh my god. And we're maybe hopefully thinking about a panel. So Yes. I don't know if they pay or not, but I feel that Anime Central is so big that and I never will ever say this again, but maybe it will pay an exposure. Yeah. Yeah. Or just the experience to be able to have host something like that at that large of a convention. You know, it's not like my local con here where there's going to be like five people in crickets. You know what I mean? Where it's like <laughs> totally not worth to put all that time in. But like to be to even have like a handful of people or like, you know, a decent or like a room that looks like there's, you know, people in it like that. That's kind of exciting. Like, I feel like I'm not expecting a lot of people. But then again, you never know. Like. People are going to be like, oh, this looks like fun. Like, I went to a panel um, here for one that was um, sexy anime dads. Like, legit. That's all it was. All this girl was doing <laughs> is she had a slideshow of different characters, what anime they from, and a little bio. And then she just, like, fangirled about them and then moved on to the next panel. And... That room was full. There's people on the floor. <laughs> I ended up leaving because most of the people that she was like gawking over, I'm like, I have never watched that anime. I've never watched that anime. I, that oh, character daddy. was a terrible father. Like, I was just like not into it. I'm like, ah, peace out. Oh, God. Well, <laughs> that being said, you guys, um, let us know what you would want to see a panel about. Shoujo trash related, Otome related. Gwen, I kind of want to host a game show. And ah, yes, can we I do like a date, like a dating sim type thing? Oh my god! I don't, I don't want to throw out my idea because I don't want somebody else to take it. So True. I'll talk to you about it after we record, <laughs> or or I'm gonna edit it out right now. Yes. And speaking of shoujo trash shenanigans, we got some trash talk questions oh, from yes, you guys. I we haven't done. Those I didn't. Yet. I didn't. I got them. I got them all. Got them. Oh, I got catch them all. Uh, Pokemon. All right. So, Cure Bunny, Barry Lolita Seven asks, black haired howl or blonde howl? Spill the tea. What about? What red about? Hair, towel. Towel, howl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, toweling. Like, like over exaggerated um, redheaded towel. Towel, my God. Towel. <laughs> I mean, he was in a towel, so maybe that's why he's thinking about that. <laughs> towel. Gwen towel needs to off. wipe the sweat off. Oh, oh, thinking oh, about okay. that redheaded fan, howl. Fan myself that redheaded towel. See, that's a towel again. I like the blonde womanizer howl that's at the beginning. Not going to front. That one's my favorite. Why? Because I like assholes. Even though he's not an asshole, I think I still have a Nick Carter complex. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> no one is surprised. So that's my tea. I mean, I, I like dark hair. I mean, I'm all about the, the dark hair, dark hair <laughs> boys. Total, totally down with that. All right. Our girl Katarina, Kit Kat about all ass a lot. So we'll start she with does. number one. Have you read <laughs> Have you read the book? No. No. I didn't even know the book existed until about an hour ago. <laughs> uh, number two, blonde howl or dark haired howl? Gwen likes the redhead. <laughs> I like them all but the blonde. <laughs> the, bl the blonde is my favorite. Go for it. Uh, all for you, girl. All for you. <laughs> yeah. Number three, what... What would you imagine would happen if Sophie in the end had stayed old Sophie? I feel like Howell would be doing everything he can to realize her value because she didn't, she for the longest time didn't know her value and he kept wanting, kept, he even like, like kind of, because it kind of was like he was hiding the fact that he knew who she was. And then like there was that moment where she was like, you know, regular Sophie and then she like, gradually turn into old Sophie like oh not pretty and he's like no you're beautiful like come on like he would just wanted to like shake her and be like stop it like realize your true value like stop thinking about what others are thinking and it was I feel like as it probably would turn into almost a depressing cycle where he would keep telling her that she's the most amazing person on the planet and then she would just keep saying no no there's there's other people that are better than me that's why it's kind of happen. It's kind of like my life every day. 
<laughs> You're beautiful, Gigi. No, I'm not. <laughs> I- Sh- shut up. You just like that because blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Because I watched Steven Universe with you at 11 p.m. (laughs) Uh, No. Um, You know, I still think that Howell would have loved her regardless. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that if she had stayed old Sophie, um, maybe her back would have hurt a little more. And maybe she would have been sad that she couldn't have her youth back. But I think, like, inside, she still would have been the same person. Um, and that Howell would see that and they'd make a really cute age gap couple. So just let him be. <laughs> and I also really like the part where she's like sleeping and he like, just like looks upon her and it's just, like, yes. And it's the younger and, Sophie. Yeah. And she's like, sleeping, uh, but she's younger and he's just like admiring. And it's just, it's kind of, I really like that. It's like, you know, Howell knows who Sophie is and everything. And maybe he also feels guilty because he know why he knows why it happened, you know, like because the Witch of the Waste saw him with her and it's almost all his fault. Like that's he probably that's one of the reasons probably why at first he didn't kick her out because he realized who she was and realized what had happened and was like, I can't kick her out. It's all my fault. Hmm. You're mm-hmm. right. You're right. It still would be a beautiful story. It still would be. Uh, Number four, why did Sophie's hair stay silver? I seriously can't figure this out. Um, I would say because she's the new Sophie. It's much like Howell never put his hair back to blonde. He had developed and changed and kept, didn't change his hair, probably because his hair wasn't supposed to be blonde because lotions and potions. And... So it's kind of like staying with that theme of she changed, her hair's changed. I mean, she chopped off her hair. She gave it to Calcifer to fuel uh, the fire, so to say. And it just was like the new the new Sophie. The old Sophie doesn't exist anymore. So including her hair. Right. I think that even though she got her youth back, like she still matured. Mm-hmm. And she still has the freedom that she had when she was older. So I think that's why her hair stayed that color. Mm -hmm. Like a symbolism type thing. Yep. Yep. Like a symbolism that no matter what you look on the outside, there are still, you know, parts of you that on the inside that remain the same or vice versa. Yes. Okay. Number five. (laughs) In the film, and I assume the book, several characters are not themselves i.e. Sophie, Howell, Calcifer, etc. So which characters, if any, do you believe were truly honest? Probably Howell. He knew it all. He didn't admit anything, but he knew everything that was happening. He knew about Calcifer. He knew what it was. He knew about the Witch of the Waste. He he knew what she was doing. She He knew about Sophie. He knew about the world, and he knew what was right and wrong, and he did everything he could to fight for what he believed was the right thing to do. He may have not voiced it. You know, I... Sorry, go ahead. And I don't think he necessarily hit it, but it's something that it's... It's like this, like when people say, well, you never told me. Well, I never didn't tell you, you know, kind of a thing, if that makes sense. You know who I think was honest? I think it's that witch because at the end, she friggin... Try, almost kills herself and all, almost kills Calcifer in the process trying to take Howell's heart mm-hmm. because you know honestly that's all she wanted in the first place and she's still going to go for it even though it's going to wreck the world and wreck the castle and wreck everything if she takes it and she still friggin grabs it and I was like yep you're a wrecker but yep. it, like, she's honest with herself and knows that that's what she wants and she doesn't care if she's friends-ish with Sophie and Markle and the Scarecrow anymore. She's still going to fucking take that heart because... She's a crazy bitch. Yeah, that's what she wants. Um, I think Heen. Heen was the most himself. That's the dog. That's <laughs> 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 so what the dog did. <laughs> he like... 
ditched his owner, was like, peace out, I'm going to hang out with Sophie, bitch. <laughs> Just like, he knew what was up. He, he He's not going to lie. He liked Sophie. Why am I here? Because <laughs> trash. Because Shoujo trash just her love. Yes, this is true. <laughs> and number six, if you had a house with a magical door, where would it go? Oh, well, how many how many spots did he have? He had four, five, four, I five, don't know. Something. So say you have your house, you have, have your home. So where you're located right now and you can be connected to four other doors All right. to keep it consistent if that's how many i think he well he had the black one i think it was like four and then the, i don't know we're gonna say okay four. so let's let's say we have four four yeah we have four plus your your home your home base my that's, home door that's different so there's your home base plus the other four okay so my first door would obviously go to disney world Ooh. okay that's I feel like ours are going to be borderline the same. I feel like there's going to at least be one where it's not the same. <laughs> my second door would go to wherever my boyfriend is. Okay, yeah, that's that's the one I was thinking is definitely going to be different. Because, <laughs> no, you, you have that door all to yourself. We can share the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. You pick two and then I'll come back. Um... I definitely would do Disney World. I don't know if I'd do Disney World or Disneyland because there's things I like about both. Uh, well, you could have two doors. But I, do I really want to fill up two doors with Disney? No. <laughs> I feel like that would just be haphazard. So, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Me and Gigi are neighbors. <laughs> I'm going to Disneyland and then I'm going over to her house and we're going to Disney World. Um, my Sounds other good. one easy would be um to sweden so it'd be easier to see patrick's mom and sister blah 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 sentimental jargon um i definitely would have a door to japan because then i ain't got to pay that ems shipping yep, yep that was gonna be my other door so i'll just come <laughs> bye, over to bye, your bye, house shipping <laughs> i'll be like can i borrow a cup of sugar and by the way <laughs> and by the way i'm gonna get some kobe beef <laughs> Uh, talk about cringe just now. Holy <laughs> crap. Um, <laughs> so that's three out of the four. What is my fourth door? I would have a door that goes to Paris because it's one of my favorite places on earth. I feel like as long as you have one door into a European country, like all of Europe is yours. Basically. Because like, so once you get there... It's easy to get around. It is. Like, I can go to Disneyland Paris if I want to. Like, I'm pretty much set. I can go you to Germany pay, and buy a suitcase right, full of hair dollars, fly over to Germany real easy. Like, yeah, it's it's just like state hopping, except over water, basically. Yeah, essentially. Um, man, this last <laughs> one's kind of hard because it's like, since they got your home base, it's like, you know, there's your your fam and all that. So that's that's easy that's covered hmm. um i feel like i would want to want a door to somewhere just super relaxing much like how he had made that new door to that field for sophie i would want to go to alaska really yeah because i know it rains all the time and like it's super cold there but there's nobody there like yeah. during if you're not there in the summer like they'd say literally like there's no one around so if i want to go somewhere where there's literally nobody and not like sweat to death i would go to alaska plus i might finally see that bear that oh i never God. saw my dad and stepmom were in canada and they saw all these people pulled over on the side of the road so they pulled over and they everyone was staring at a bear oh, i'm so jealous <laughs> When I went to Alaska, like the three things I wanted to see, I wanted to see a glacier, I wanted to see an eagle, and I wanted to see a bear. And I saw a million eagles and a big ass glacier. I did not see one fucking bear. I was so pissed. I'd say if you want to see eagles, you just come over here. There's a spot up, like a, about an hour north into Illinois, a little bit. That's like Eagle Cove. It's like where you go to see eagles here around here. Man, I don't it was remember so what fucking it's called. Cool. I really I feel love like, Alaska. 
I feel like I'd want. I feel like I'd want a door to, to like Hawaii. Oh, that's a good door. Because if it's too cold, I just hop on over. Um, hop on over when it's like the off season. Like I asked Morgan actually just today and I was like, what's the off? It's like, does Hawaii have an off season? He's like, yeah, November to February. There's no one here. And I was like, duly noted. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where my ass is going to be is November to February. going to be using that door going to Hawaii because there's no one there. Nice. And it's pretty. And I can sit on the beach and drink some fruity rum drink out of a coconut until my heart's content. Bam. Bam. Unlimited refills. Wow. We made us some good ass doors. Right? I like this fantasy life that I, that we built for ourselves. Can, can we, can someone start working on how to make (laughs) these doors a reality? (laughs) Like I would be down with it. Man, totally it'd, down. It'd be like my wish to teleport wherever I want to go because I hate flying so much. Uh, our good friend Rosie, love the wings foe Eva, asks <laughs> or says, "I love this movie. What do you think about the dub by Disney?" I liked it. I've actually never watched this in Japanese. I did watch a little bit of it in Japanese just because we have a question coming up about dubs. Um, I don't like young Sophie she can go away uh (laughs) Christian Bale was really good I liked all the old people um and Calcifer was like annoying but he was kind of supposed to be annoying I'm not a huge Billy Crystal fan so that's why I was just kind of like um and fun fact is the little boy is played by Josh Hutcherson who's fucking PETA in Hunger Games. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. I never... So I watched, like, a little snippet of, like, the make of, and it's, like, him as a child talking about how cool it is to voice this character and do this movie for Disney and all these other people that are super famous. He's going to be in a movie with them, even though he probably never met them because they never <laughs> voice record at the same time. <laughs> and it's so funny because it's, like, you see his recording studio, and then you see the one Christian Bale is in, and it's, like, this luxury recording studio that's like this room bigger than my apartment with all these like couches and rugs and microphone and gear everywhere and like these fancy people all hanging out and I'm like oh, poor kid never met him <laughs> <laughs> probably he did now I mean he's he's kind of famous now it's kind of famous now um I mean it was okay I, Sophie kind of wrecked it for me mm-hmm. um but I liked Christian Bale. I liked the older ladies in it. Um, basically, I liked everyone but Sophie. Young Sophie. Sorry. <laughs> um, and then finally, um, Lotus at Event Grind got me down. Hold on. I got to click on her thing because her name's really long. Yeah, Otome Doki Desu. That's cool. I kind of like that a lot. I like um, too. Said, which voice cast is your fave? I heard the English dub first, and so I'm pretty attached, but the Japanese cast is amazing, too. Also, the French voices are lovely as well. My bestie and I actually watched it in every language on the DVD and made a multilingual dream cast. That's awesome. I like that a lot. Um, Yeah. So um, I really liked the Japanese dub, what I heard of it. Sophie's much better in Japanese. (laughs) Um, and then Howell is also good in Japanese for a hot second I thought it was Junichi Suwabe but it's not Um, Howell in Japanese is actually played by uh, Takuya Kimura who uh, was the lead in Redline and that's it actually that makes a lot of sense that he's the lead in Redline which is an awesome movie I really enjoy that movie a lot um so, yeah, I, I really like the Japanese. The French one also sounded oddly um, appropriate. Like, I kind of feel like parts of Howell's Moving Castle, like, could take place in a France-like country. Um, mm-hmm. Especially with all the different um, countrysides and everything that are in France and the cities and everything. Um, so I feel that, you know, it was oddly appropriate um, out of the three, uh, even though I only watched it for a little bit, the Japanese was by far my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Although I do like Christian Bale. 
Not going to front. I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> People who don't like Batman. The Batman. Yeah, he. I mean, he. I feel like he went through a, through a lot of like throat lodgings while doing that. I think so. I think so, too. All right, guys. Well, that's everything we got for Howl's Moving Castle. Again, thank you to everybody who sent in trash talk questions. You guys are the greatest. You know we love you a whole lot, and we hope you enjoyed this episode, even though it didn't turn out to be probably what either one of us thought it was going to be. But sometimes (laughs) that's how it goes. Um, So coming up next... uh, So we have two things that may be one thing because Gwen still needs to pick her birthday episode, but we're still going to do one on Akash, Path of the Five. Well, I said that, but I feel like, eh, I just didn't know what to pick. So I was like, let's do it on that. And Gigi's why I was like, girl, we're going to do that anyway. It's not something that we're just not going to do. I I know I have to think about it. I need to give myself a couple. I have to think about it because I need to think about it soon. Well, why don't you think about that and then we'll do Akash in October because it's coming out on Steam on a Mac so I can actually play it. Ooh, are you actually going to play it or are you going to play one route and just be like, I'm going to watch Gwen's streams? No, I'll probably actually play it because then I can fast forward past the parts that are boring. Not well, uh, not that it, there are boring parts because I don't know. I've never played or watched a stream yet. Well, but it's, you very, know, it's very line- linear, I, I guess, to to call it like but like you know the one route like you have to for fast forward past in the beginning like do i yeah, have to common. do that a lot well i mean i don't want to say in the podcast because it's we'll, we'll talk about it but i'll tell you later all right like i just <laughs> like okay if you ever played amnesia you have to play the whole fucking prologue oh my before God, you can pick another so boy long. like the common route is literally like five minutes long and then oh there's like God. 20 it's hours of the actual so like that is long. the longest game ever like code realize is is pretty long but i mean it does there's are several moments that happen and are consistent with all the storylines and then it's like and then you get on the main guy's route like there's certain things that it's like oh you're on this guy's route so like certain things a little bit different things and it's like a little ripple in the water and then it settles down and you're back into what everyone else went through and then you finally it's like the last couple of chapters are like the actual like characters route but it's hmm. not like amnesia where it's like 99.999991% of the game is different every single route. It's insane. Okay. So well, you know what? I might actually by October be able to stream some of this on Twitch. Cuz I have a new laptop now. It's not a piece of garbage like my hey. old laptop. So if it works, I'll see what Until I can Mac do. Until Mac has an update and it just totally kills your I know. Laptop. Fuck. Um, All right, so we got that to look forward to. Gwen's going to pick her birthday episode. And then just today, I put out a question on my Twitter where I said, hit me with your best shoujo trash Halloween-y anime and go. And here's the responses that we got. Okay. Soul Eater. Didn't we get that last year? (laughs) I think so, but I don't think Soul Eater is not shoujo. No, but I mean, Death the Kid, though. Death the Kid, though. But I have a big poster of Death the Kid. I don't know I, if anyone Death knows the that. Kid is like I love my him. my OCD anime champion. He is symmetry. my spirit animal because like <laughs> I have this thing about everything being like even. Like it was so funny. Before I realized this, I was over at my sister's house and like her living room used to be um Disney and um Harry Potter. Yeah, it was Disney and Harry Potter. And it was like she had everything mixed and I was like mm. Mm-mm-mm. And she's like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, you've got Ariel next to Dumbledore. And I don't know no, how I feel about that. And she's it. like, what do you mean? I'm like, oh, can you put Dumbledore by Harry and put like <laughs> freaking Snow White next to Ariel? Like, I don't understand why Harry is next to Snow White. And I just, I can't. Oh, just put the princesses together and call it a night. yo. <laughs> and she was like, well, how would you do this? And I just got up and like rearranged her entire living room, like took things off of walls and <laughs> moved things. Thank God. And that would, like, dri- that would drive better. me nuts. <laughs> We got the wallflower, but no idea of its actual content. Only know the vibe from the cover. Like the only Halloweeny part of the wallflower, because I've seen three quarters of it, 
is that the main girl thinks she's like the girl from the ring, basically. <laughs> but it's not it's a it's a reverse harem. It's not Halloween y. And then um Katarina and my boyfriend said ghost hunt. Filled I think with we got spooky that last stories, year too. paranormal studies, and handsome studs. Now this is my boyfriend saying that. <laughs> What does he know about handsome studs that we don't know? I mean, Chris, he, I'm looking at you. <laughs> he Here's does help me Uda Priest scout. Like he's a good boy. He knows who Camu is, and he knows that Cecil is a cat that we don't want in my gotcha pulls. Ow, ow. Um, I I need I need more. I need more to make a poll. Devil's you know, line. What I wish we had was the OVA special of Starmew that literally was a Halloween special. But we don't have that because we're no. not privileged enough. Because they don't have no one brought over any of the o, the actual OVA that literally connects season one to season two. We they didn't, didn't bring over any of the OVA specials. Two. And it's like season two is like <sighs> split because I think Crunchyroll has season two, but Funimation doesn't have it. And they release season one. And then now season three is just like, I don't know what's going to happen. And I have season one on DVD, but I don't think I'm ever going to get anything else on DVD. <sighs> give me, give me them all. Give it to a company that's going to treat it right. Don't just take shit. And then not do anything with it. Because that makes us angry. Well, we need some more Halloween <laughs> shoujo trash anime, guys. So we can make a poll. Otherwise, it's going to be Devil's Line again. I've watched, I think, one and a half episodes of Devil's Line. That's that one that was on High Dive, right? It is one that was on High Dive. Doesn't it? Ha does it have a dub? Yeah. Did they dub it? Oh, okay. Because mm -hmm. I know they did like some big special edition LE box for it, didn't they? Yeah, I want it real bad. But I'm poor, <laughs> so I can't afford it right now. Um, what else do we got on here? Ooh, what is this? Who are these daddies? Oh, it's Black Butler. Never mind. <laughs> I'm looking at a bunch of stuff, and I can't really find anything that would work. Um, so, yeah, give us a list of Halloween shoujo trash anime that you guys would want to see an episode about so we can do another poll for October. Um, vampires are good. Witches are good. I wish Sugar Sugar Rune were available because I'd like to finish that. It's about witches. It's really cute. And it's shoujo. I really like it. Um, I don't know. You guys hit me with your best shoujo trash halloween rex or it's gonna be ghost hunt versus devil's line because i can't think of anything else well you guys let us know what you want to see for a halloween episode we'll put up a poll for october and we will do your magical bidding as we do on the shoujo trash showdown all right that's all i got for this episode you got anything else my co-host gwen um no I do all not. right <laughs> there's always something extra. I mean, there's just me. I mean, if you want to talk about extra. Hey. <laughs> All right, fam. So if you want to keep up to date on the Shoujo Trash Showdown podcast, please feel free to follow us on Twitter at Shoujo Trash Show. Shoujo is spelled with a U. Show is spelled with a W where you'll get first access to all our listener polls and questions for future episodes. If you want to be in a trash talk segment, we're always there for you. Our, this show is to keep us amused and also to keep you amused and informed. So we're here for you to do your bidding. Um, you can also subscribe to us on YouTube. On my channel, it's youtube.com slash C slash Anime Palooza with a capital A. Working on getting it on iTunes because <laughs> it's still expensive and I'm still broke. But we will make this happen, I promise you, by the end of September. It will be on podcast platforms. So it can magically download to your phone every Monday that we have an episode. Um, if you want to follow me, you can on this YouTube channel, on Twitter, Twitch, my anime list, or my figure collection, at Anime Palooza, uh, where I talk about, uh, I don't know, how tired I am. 
cute things my boyfriend did. Coffee. Udapri. Gwen. That's basically <laughs> it. <laughs> or you can, you can follow Gwen at cooking koala two underscore zero or subscribe to her YouTube channel Koala's Room where she posts stuff that's way better than mine. I have, well, I've been so I was so burnt out with streaming Akash for like I mean it's not like it was like an hour long stream it was like each stream was like four hours long. <laughs> it's like I'm a little burnt out. Girl, it's a lot yeah. of content to read and a, little, and a lot of inappropriate moments to laugh at. Um, go watch her Akash streams on her YouTube channel so you can catch up and get ready for our podcast on that. She, she done it all, fam. She done it all. And if you do watch it, you have to watch my first one about Lux's story because in all the other ones, I've skipped what has already happened. And it goes so fast when it skips something, you ain't going to follow it. It just goes. It's really fast. I did it on accident. Once. I was like, oh, 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 it goes fast. Oh, my God. So, yeah, so get ready for that. To read Lux's We're story. We're trying the best to make your Shoto Trash Dreams happen. And that's going to be the end of our yet another episode where we make animal noises. Hey. Quality content. Quality content. Can I make a castle noise? What noise does a castle make? <laughs> I like it. It's the cannon. <laughs> Oh, God. Until next time, fam. (laughs) Love your faces.